Salutations, friends. It's your pal, said Stevie. And looky, looky, what I got. That there is a Chavez. Yep, this is the Ultramar uh, 229 Kickstop Chavez. The newest hyped knife out there, in my opinion. Uh, people be talking about this thing like crazy. Uh, this is the Urban EDC Supply uh, exclusive with the Sigourney Weaver pattern. Or Sagahai, Sagahai, uh, however you pronounce it. Not sure. But uh, this is on loan from Steve Clare, my Pacific Northwest knife brother. I uh, was having breakfast with him this past weekend. Uh, also with... Stiff Detent and his lovely wife, quite frankly. Uh, a couple more of my Pacific Northwest uh, knife uh, homies. Uh, on a lunch break, drinking some coffee, black like my soul. But Steve said, uh, hey, you want to check this thing out? And I said, I sure do. Because, uh, again, there's a lot of hype around this knife. Everybody is calling it the best Chavez ever made. Uh, and uh, because of this kickstop. Uh, which I have, uh, I had zero experience with a kickstop uh, flipper uh, prior to this. I think maybe I flipped one on a Pina. Does Pina have one? I think maybe Pina had one uh, that I tried at a Blade Show or something. But uh, So I said, sure, I'll uh, check it out. And I rode with it uh, over the weekend. I didn't pocket it uh, just because... I don't uh, want anything to happen to it. Uh, Steve might end up selling this when he's done. I don't know. Uh, but the one thing that I was noticing was that the detent is really heavy. And it's like I'm I'm putting a lot of pressure on that uh, kickstop flipper tab to have to try to deploy it. And that just didn't seem right. And it's like it hurts my finger. Uh, action is otherwise uh, great, uh, just what you would expect from a Chavez. Uh, but again, it's just really tough to deploy. So that can't be right. Uh, you, you know, it, with everyone saying that this is the best knife or best Chavez ever, um, I don't know. And then I noticed, and may, I thought maybe this was just part of the uh, construction of having a kickstop is. You got a lot of uh, play in the uh, blade when you are touching the kickstop. Uh, so I was ready to say that this thing is too overhyped, and I don't know how people are considering this such an amazing knife, uh, just based on uh, the, the detent and how much that was hurting. Uh, so flash forward a couple days, I'm hanging with Sharif and Maddie. Uh, live, or uh, not live, but uh, backstage on StreamYard, just uh, kicking it, hanging out, shooting the ship, and uh, as I am uh, messing around with this thing, I really did, I told them a hot take, I'm about to uh, tell everyone that they're wrong, that this thing is not good. Uh, but then I noticed that I, I started just messing around with the pivot, and I noticed that you can, there's lateral movement to this pivot. A lot of lateral movement. Like, can you hear that? It's snapping back and forth. Can you, can I catch it on camera? Well, it's not going to do it now. Yeah, there it goes. Uh, I sent a video of uh, this to Steve. Uh, last night, but you can see there uh, lots of play in that pivot and then depending on where uh, You have the pivot pushed off to the detent completely changes Completely changes um, if I push it over there now Now it's super light and I can easily fail it something. I could not do before I mean see that I barely give it any pressure and now it flops over uh, but then if I push the uh, that detent back in it's back to being super stiff so uh, as i said i took uh, some video of that sent it to steve and said hey um i don't want to do anything to this uh you know without uh, you giving the okay i haven't put any tools on this to try to tighten that pivot 
Um, and he said, treat it like it's yours. Go ahead. Uh, he trusts me. So I figured I'd ramble on a little bit and do a disassembly on this because I am also very interested in learning uh, kind of how this uh, kickstop is working because it's uh, if you don't know about the kickstop, uh, this flipper tab is actually not attached to the blade itself. That's why when you deploy it, you have a hidden flipper. And it does create for some pretty good ergos on this uh, Chavez. Uh, but the Chavez already had good ergos. You know, typically uh, it's just a thumb stud only. Uh, pretty stiff on the thumb stud also, but a good thumb stud knife in my opinion. Oh, what you doing, Ella? What you doing? Uh, doggies out with me. But uh, as you can see, when the uh, it's halfway deployed, you know it, it rattles around because uh, it's completely independent from the uh, the knife or the blade itself. And if I'm looking at it, see if my uh, it looks like it's kind of on its own. Uh, detent slash uh, bearing system so uh i'd like to see how this is put together and i'd like to fix this uh issue so i'm gonna take it apart so i think you have to take the clip off or you don't have to take the clip off to or no maybe you do i don't know that's the whole thing with these new uh chavez is the clips or the screws used to be on the back side of the uh, on the inside of the scale and then a bunch of people bitched and he moved them to the outside which is completely stupid that I, if you think that that looks better than the original clip having those two uh, screws right in the middle of the forehead of this awesome pocket clip uh, I think that that's a weird thing that you would like that uh, I think it completely ruins the aesthetic of the knife um, let's see here. Uh, T8s? Probably T8s. So, let's see here. And I also want to see what it looks like with the uh, other pocket clip on. It comes with another pocket clip. So, let's get to taking this thing apart. Uh, busting out the Shoka-Cola can to uh, hold my screws. So, I think I, at minimum, need to take apart the top screw here do I need to take maybe I need to take this down from this side that makes more sense that makes a lot more sense so uh, there is one screw there one screw there and then the uh, pivot so this pivot is not free spinning, or is it? Nope, it's not. It's not free spinning, and I'm able to back this out. No problem. But it's, well, okay, that's the pivot on that side. All right, that's weird. Okay, this thing's just falling apart. Where'd the kickstop go? I wanted to see how that came out. Okay, there are bearings on, or washers on the kickstop. I want to be careful not to lose those. Okay. Okay. I didn't see how that came out, so that'll be... I'll have to mess with that. I guess that works as the stop pin also. Okay, both the washers just came off. You need to be careful with that. I guess that doubles as the stop pin as well. So, uh, very basic construction. No milling whatsoever on uh, the scales. Uh, this is a hefty knife. If you've ever handled a Chavez, a full titanium, you already know this thing's heavy as F. But, yeah, see, I, I, I think that the screw should be on the back side of the clip. That's just silly. Oh well, it is what it is. But, uh, I guess this thing is not dirty. They did get a little sloppy with the, uh, you'll see it when I put it back together, but... When the knife or the blade is fully deployed, you still see a little bit of the satin uh, underneath. Uh, so they didn't cover it up as well as they should have uh, before they acid washed it and tumbled it. But I'm just going to give this a quick whack me down. 
wipe down these bearings real quick. Uh, so, I did not see how that kick stop came off. Uh, I guess the backspacer is going to just flop around there as well. Uh, let me clean off the blade. Maybe I should put a couple dabs of lubrication on it as well. So, how did that work? I guess it goes like that. Yeah, it does. Because that would mean when it's fully open or when it's closed. How is that going to work? I don't know. I'll have to check it out. Uh, I'm going to pause for a sec. Oh, I lost my cursor. I lost my cursor. Where'd my cursor go? Pause. All right. Uh, I paused because I forgot that when I went and visited uh, Casey and Thomas over at Lynch Northwest a couple weeks ago, uh, Thomas gave me some of their uh, Lynch Northwest dog drool uh, lubricant to try out. Uh, it's 15 weight, and I haven't tried it out yet. So uh, I'm going to lube this thing up with... Uh, with the dog drool. So what I'm gonna do is put just a dab in the, uh, on the washers there. So you can see that, oh, I didn't wipe off the pivot. Let me back that off and wipe off the pivot there. That is actually pretty goobered up. Um, it is not a captive pivot. It's not. There's no D shape in it at all. That's silly. This is a Riot production knife. Why would it not be captive? That doesn't seem right at all. That seems really stupid. Um, okay, so. For a four. This knife, this variant. Is four hundred and ten dollars, by the way. Uh, I think that for four hundred and ten bucks, and I don't know what the normal one, uh, the non Urban EDC exclusive goes for, but I think that for four hundred and ten bucks, you need to have a captive pivot. Uh, that seems just a little silly to me. I'm gonna put a little uh, lube in this pocket for the kickstop I'm almost certain that the kickstop's gotta go oh that pin moves too alright that's interesting that's not a uh, that free uh, freely moves there um, I'm going to put then a little dab on around the a pin there and then I'm gonna set it in like so it's got to go like that because yeah it's got to go like that so I need to put the blade in first that's the question okay there we go that is how it goes so you can see when it's all the way closed. There it is. Okay, so that's how it's working. Uh, does that make sense there? So when you flick it, it opens up and that doubles as the stop pin. And then when you close it, there, it seats like so. Okay, that makes sense. Is this titanium or is that steel? That's what I really want to know. Um, okay, that's steel. So it's uh, it's steel on steel. Or steel on titanium. I guess that's good, right? Or no? Yeah, no, You. I guess you would want that to be steel, not titanium. What am I talking about, Willis? I'm talking nonsense here. Okay, so let me back up real quick. Um, I'm going to put a little dab of oil in the 
uh, detent uh, ball track. Now I'm going to put some lube around here again. But okay, so this is, I, uh, you know, it is what it is. I think that this should also be a, I think that this should have thumb studs on it as well. Just having the kick stop seems a little weird uh, for it being a Chavez. I'm, ooh, there is a little detent ramp there as well. Okay. I always over lube and then uh, wipe off excess. That's just the way I do it. And I always put uh, balls on the, uh, the open face of the cage towards the blade. It don't, I don't think it matters. I'd also drop some skiffs in here if this was mine. I think it takes quarter inch or six millimeters, one of the two. Uh, so I lube that up, lube a little dab on. I didn't actually wipe that off. Let me wipe that off first. And now I will put a little dab on there. I said little, and then I put a lot. Um, some on there, and some in there as well. Now this should go back together, like so. I don't have the These have to line up there, which I think that deer. So this will end up being a longer video than I had anticipated, but uh, I gotta say, uh, if I'm able to correct that pivot from moving around, uh, I don't understand why it is. Um, maybe if it was captive, it wouldn't be doing that. But if I'm able to correct that and make it so that detent isn't so freaking stiff, um, this knife, I, it's not as bad as I was going to say that it was. I still think that, um, okay, it doesn't want to, there we go, there we go, there we go. For it being a non-captive pivot, um, I'm not, it's not rotating but God I can still move the pivot though why does it do that that don't make sense to me is that normal for this thing if so then that's just dumb uh, I don't Hmm. What am I missing here, folks? Why would this, unless it's just a design flaw, uh, why would... I got everything tightened down. But I still got that lateral movement in the pivot. And that doesn't make sense. Unless the... Hmm. I know maybe what it could have been. I'm going to pause and back up for a second, just so I don't uh, take up extra time. Alright, I uh, took it back apart to see if maybe that the pivot barrel was loose from the pivot screw. Uh, and But it's not. It's bottomed out and it's sitting flush against the pivot uh, screw, so there's no uh, there's no tightening that down. So why is there, unless it's just the tolerances are off, and if that's the case, uh, I don't know if they're all like that, or if that's just this one, and, and if that's the case, uh, I think Steve will have to address that with uh, Urban EDC and see what they want to do about that. So, all right, now I got these stupid washers nuts there we go there we go okay put that back on wipe it down a little bit is that right yep that's right so uh for you folks out there that have one of these are you having that experience 
I'm gonna have to uh, reach out to some other people and see what they have to say because that just doesn't seem right for it to have a pivot that is able to walk like that. I don't, I don't know. So I gotta say, uh, if that is an issue with all of them, then I'm not a fan of this knife. I just, I, I don't like that. Uh, if it's an issue with just this one, then I reserve my judgment. Uh, also, you can see what I'm talking about here. Uh, you see some of the satin. You see that right there? The satin is exposed, like, so they didn't cover it up all the way. I think a couple of little QC issues uh, here on this one. Uh, we're back to, to being centered. We got a little bit of blade play, so maybe I... Maybe I need to tighten this down more? But then if I tighten it that much, then... Ooh, is that all it needed? Did I just need to tighten it down more? Am I railing against this knife and it just needed to have the pivot tightened more? That's too much. That's too much. No, I just got to try to dial this pivot in now. It's getting windy out, folks. As you can see, my camera is moving around. Okay. Maybe that's all it needed. All right. I thought I had tightened that pivot down well enough, and I didn't. That there. Okay. That seems good to go. Though I have seen these drop a lot. The one that I had was a complete guillotine. So. Well, there it is. I don't got any play in that pivot anymore. So I guess that's all it was. Huh. I was ready to uh, condemn this knife, and it just had uh, the pivot screw needed to be tightened down a little bit, but it shouldn't have came like that. Steve didn't do anything to this. He just took it out of the box and uh, flipped it a couple times before he passed it along to me. That shouldn't be like that, and that shouldn't be like that either for 410 bucks. So... I also think that just little touches, and this is just a Chavez design thing. Where'd I go? Um, I think that they should have flush fitting screws. Everything sits super proud. Maybe that's just a design choice. I mean, obviously it is. That's what was spec. But you see how the pivots uh, stick proud? And then you can see how they uh, are proud on the scales and on the clip. I think that those should all be flush fitting. And I do think you should have a captive pivot on there. But, yeah, the uh, you light switch it, and it's got a snappy detent. I can fail it, still. So it seems like maybe... Alright, so if I just loosen it back down... That's weird, if I loosen the pivot, I get a little bit stiffer of a detent. Huh. I don't know, I can't recreate that problem now though, so I'm just gonna call that good. There we go, that, that seems better. So, alrighty, well there we go folks. There is the Chavez Ultramar 229 with the, uh, is it Lee Williams uh, kickstop? Uh, I don't have the specs in front of me uh, for a Chavez. Uh, here it is against a uh, Para 3. Here it is against a uh, McNeese Mac 2. I got shit all over that. Um, here it is against a uh, Dapper Ion. 
Uh, here it is against a, a mini Bic. Later, uh, here it is against a um, Oral B charcoal mint uh, floss pick. Everyone should have these in their uh, repertoire, their EDC. I'll tell you what, um, if you've made it this far, it's going to be a half hour video. If you made it this far, uh, first person to comment uh, that I see uh, floss like a boss, I'll send you a pack of charcoal mint Oral B floss picks. And you can try them out and let, them, let me know. Uh, what you think so first comment that I see in this video um, uh, We'll get a pack and you have to say floss like a boss But uh, yeah So You know, uh, I assume that you're already familiar with a Chavez. It does have a nice uh, hollow grind a uh, compound grind I'm a fan of the Tanto a lot more than uh, the drop points a nice swedge, a nice jimping. Um, I like that jimping up there. It's also, you know, similar to like the McNeese. Um, what am I doing there? Uh, or the Mac 2. But I think that this knife needs to be, I, it should be a thumb stud also, in my opinion. Put a thumb stud in addition to this kick stop, and I think it makes it an amazing knife. Just with the kickstop alone, I mean, I don't know. It's cool. Is it the best Chavez ever, though? I don't know. I think the best Chavez's are the the third gen uh, with the old style clip. Uh, let's see what it looks like with the other clip on it, just because I've never seen it. Uh, also, um, one of the uh, Ferrum Forges that I'm chasing uh, eventually... Uh, hopefully uh, we'll get is uh, they did a collaboration with Chavez way back in the day uh, the Veloz uh, that's a pretty gnarly uh, little knife and it's a um, design collaboration uh, it's a Ferrum Forge mid-tech though so uh, that is on my list of Of uh, Prime Forges, I'd like to get eventually. So I know that uh, this is sacrilegious. Uh, there's no way I could ever carry a Chavez that did not have the skull clip on it. Can't do it. That's what to me kind of makes it. It's weird how a pocket knife to find or a pocket clip defines a knife, but. I gotta say, uh, I like the looks of that more than having the pocket, the, the screws going through the skull. But, I don't know, that just seems, I feel dirty just for doing that. But I think it looks better. I do think it looks better. Um, for sure, I think it looks better than having... The uh, double tap in the middle of the forehead here. But um, I think that if uh, you were to carry this and you were to run into Ramon Chavez and you had this clip on there, uh, <laughs> um, I think he'd be severely disappointed. Uh, he's a cool dude. I've talked to him at uh, Blade Show before. Uh, you know who's got actually one of the what I really like is Eggs and Ham got the Blade Show West exclusive, uh, the Tanto with the chisel grind on it. That's pretty sweet. But well, I got this dialed in. Uh, at least that fixes that problem. That'll make Steve feel good. I think but that's really all it ended up being. All this over a loose pivot. But you know, you don't know until you take it apart and check. So. Yeah. Well, I recommend this knife. Uh, 
Look, uh, if you are into Chavez, you probably already got one. I should say it's M390 on the steel as well. Uh, if you're into Chavez, uh, you've already seen the reviews and you've already made up your mind and you've already got one. If you're on the fence and this video sway is looking to sway you, uh, I don't know what the normal price is on these 375 bucks. Uh, the the Don Sigourney Weaver pattern, and they got them with like G10 scales as well, uh, or full titanium. I would go full titanium. No, I would actually, I would go with the G10, and then I would send it to my brother, uh, Pro X 1840, and have him do some sort of a micarta scale on it or something. But, you know, titanium frame lock, uh, this kickstop deal, I think, adds some value to it, uh, some perceived value. I don't know. Uh... I think that if this knife also had a thumb stud on it uh, to deploy, that uh, a fire out and a uh, middle finger flick, I would like it a lot more. Uh, I'd have to have a normal Chavez in hand to say if I would recommend this over a standard Chavez, but I think I would recommend the standard Chavez because uh, it's same ergos. Um, I do like a knife uh, with a flipper tab that d disappears like that. That's cool. I, I do like that. Uh, you know, it makes for a better um, ergonomic uh, grip on there because you don't have the flipper tab uh, sticking out. Um, is this the best Chavez ever made? <sighs> I don't know. In my opinion, I would say no, it's not. Not a bad knife. But for 410 bucks, there's a lot out there. So, I guess that's my hot take on the Chavez. Ultramar 229 with the Lee Williams uh, kickstop. There you go, folks. Let me know what you think. Um, yeah. That's all I got for you right now, though. Uh, back to work. It is for old Stevie. Oh, by the way, uh, I think that this dog jewel uh, was working just fine. Uh, I got no problems with it. I got a couple more uh, disassemblies to do uh, to try out, but uh, so far, I don't know what these are selling for on the website. Uh, they just gave this to me to test out and give them some feedback on it, but so far uh, it's good. Uh, I think it's you know, it's on point. It's made in the United States. It's uh, uh, a product from Lynch Northwest. I'd prefer this over KPL, uh, just for that simple fact. Um, I'd rather have it, uh, and then I have Gunny Glide too. I don't, I don't have any problems with the lube. I typically use my Nano Weight uh, or my Nano Oil Ten Weight, but um, I'd, I'd use this. I'd have no problem p picking this up, uh, mainly because I am a Lynch Northwest fanboy. Uh, but it's also a good. I, I got no problem with it. We'll see uh, how it does on the other ones, but first impressions are good. So now that's all I got for you folks. Uh, appreciate you tuning in. Uh, this was a long one today, uh, but uh, that's all for now. Um, you can subscribe right there if you haven't already, and check out that video as well if you haven't already. Give the video a thumbs up uh, if you could, and until the next one, I bid you mofos, I deuces.